All right, we, we back again, right? All right, safety first. You got to have gloves, safety glasses, the whole nine, right? Uh, but anyway, this uh, <clears throat> on, on package units especially, uh, there's a lot of uh, assembly uh, already done for you, okay? So uh, this is the gas valve, right? I'm going to flip it around. We've got our gas valve. We've got our manifold that you already know goes to our uh, spuds and orifices which then the gas goes into the burners and stuff like that. So uh, real quick, uh, I'm going to take this apart and show you how to disassemble it uh, so you can clean it, uh, inspect it, uh, and what have you, all right? So there we go. The gas valve itself. This one does not have screws on the front. It's actually on the side, all right? So nothing fancy, basic hand tools or whatnot. Once you take those four screws out, then the manifold comes apart um, from the burners and you can see everything. Uh, you already know that uh, on the side of these orifices, uh, spud combinations, right, uh, you actually have the actual size stamped or engraved in there uh, if you ever had any problems. Uh, don't neglect the orifices during the maintenance and the cleaning. You can take something as simple as a piece of thermostat wire and clean down in there to make sure that no, um, especially on a package unit, uh, dirt daubers, spiders, or whatnot. Uh, you can even take the uh, kindergartners, use the pipettes, the little small uh, caterpillar looking fuzzy things. Uh, you can use those pipette cleaners to go down in there as well. Um, but pretty much cut and dry. All right? Gas valve, manifold, the whole nine. Uh, before I forget, uh, on some package units, you will actually have uh, this little square-headed, um, this little square-headed screw or plug. Uh, a lot of people don't know what that's for. But if you take your refrigeration wrench, um, I'll show you real quick while I'm here. You can take your refrigeration wrench uh, and put it on there. And take it off. <clears throat> now this is for your actual gas pressure checks. Um, when it's fully assembled again, but you can take that plug out. Uh, don't lose it. Okay. I wasn't ready, Terry. I wasn't ready, Terry. Uh, but that plug is where you can attach your gas pressure um, hose and uh, adapter in to uh, to check everything, right? You would actually, uh, on your manifold side, your outlet pressure, your three and a half inches of water column uh, for natural gas or 10 to 11 inches for propane, this is actually where you would um, hook up your manometer to check your gas pressure. It's a plug. It's not on the gas valve itself. But they, because of the tight situations in a package unit, they actually give you that spot um, on the, the black bar, the manifold itself. So food for thought. Screw it back in. You would actually have to tighten it back up the other way. This this one. Not a whole lot of pressure behind it, but you still want it snug. I got that index. Right. I'm sorry. I got that index drill bit. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty much your your gas valve, your orifices, how to clean them, inspect them, and look at them. I'm gonna set this out the way. All right. <clears throat> and we're gonna look at everything else right uh, the burners okay let me I'm gonna take this apart real quick this is a little uh, adapter You've got a screw on the side it holds your, your little bracket for your rollout All right I'm just gonna set that right there and of course you have to remember how to put this thing uh, together okay uh, but if you look right here let me bend this up uh, we have two burners okay um, this is a 60,000 BTU uh, input package unit, uh, but burners, uh, make sure that you, you pay attention to how they come out, 
uh, what I usually do is take a Sharpie, uh, and the unit should be running. Uh, the first thing you do when you get to somebody's house is you turn the unit on. If it works, that's good. It should work when you leave, all right? So, and y'all have heard me say that before if you've paid any attention, right? But burners, you have to make sure that they go in uh, the right way when you reassemble everything. So what I usually do is I take a Sharpie, uh, and I will mark on the top of it um, numbers, and I'll number them in order. If it's one or two, no big deal. If you mark at least one of them, then you know what the other one is. But if there's five or six, or in some cases 10, um, I know exactly what order they go in. I know which side is at the top uh, and which side is at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna take these two out. There's, there's a couple screws that hold these things in. All right, I'm gonna take those out and I'll show you something, all right? And you can see that they're falling over here. I'm going to pull these out and I'm going to point them at you, okay? Now, you can see here, I, I basically just uh, turned it around so you can see it. But if I didn't put these back in, no, notice one thing right here, right? There is a, a crimped edge right here so that the flame doesn't travel off of the burner. If I had that backwards, right, it's still going to fit because of the way they manufacture these things, right? It's still going to fit but the crimped edge would be between the burners and the flame couldn't travel that path across and light the next burner, right? So you have to make sure that these go in exactly right. There's a crimp on this end and a crimp on this end, but there's not one in the middle. So the flame, once we light with the igniter, we can travel across and to each and every other burner until we get to the end, okay? So make sure that you don't install it backwards, okay? So. These are fairly clean, but what I would do in the field is I would take them one at a time, right? I'm gonna slide this back. I'm gonna take it one at a time, and I would take a small brass brush. You can get this at Harper Freight. Uh, I left mine at home, got this exact one. Um, borrow this from the gunsmithing guy across the hallway here, right? But take something small like a, a brass brush, um, a, a soft material, and you can clean. You wanna clean that path in between, and you wanna clean the face of this. All right, so you would just brush in here, flip it over, doesn't matter. I've got it marked, I know which way is the top. All right, just you would clean the face of this and make sure there's no spiders, uh, spider webs, dirt daubers, or whatnot. You can really see the crimp right there, how it pinches it together. It doesn't allow the gas like it does over here, right? So just clean the face of these and get everything in and out. Uh, you might even have to look down the two, make sure there's nothing, make sure there's nothing inside of it. If there is, get it out. You can take something like a, a baby bottle brush is what I used to use. Um, but uh, anything that's long enough to go in there and, and just uh, twirl around and get cobwebs and stuff out. So that would be uh, both of our burners in the exact spot that they would have to go in, right? Another thing, I've already done this one before. But uh, you can see here, I've already written in, in years past, right? This is a spark igniter, and then this is a flame sensor, okay? This is where we ignite, and the other side of the burners is gonna be where we prove the flame. Uh, but I'm gonna pause this video and make that a, another one. So uh, I'll see you in just a minute.